Welcome Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of The Bookish and the Brave. Like you, the Sojourners are on a mission, and they face conflict and sometimes even danger. And this is the final episode of The Bookish and the Brave. It had been a long time since the fellas and I got together for a game. Summer camp came in full swing and life got busy and we all moved on. And as it is the way with many tabletop role-playing games, we come into each other's lives for a season. We spend time around the table laughing and talking and telling wonderful stories. And then it is over and we move on. But we'll never forget the times that we had. So in this final episode, I would like to simply conclude on the epilogue of the way I best saw the story conclude. I hope you enjoy it. If you would like more episodes of Sojourners Awake, you can listen to The Fairy and the Free or The Wild and the Wind, or you can go all the way back into the archives of the story of Felthrin Grovelor and his adventures in the Blood War. Thank you for listening, Sojourner, but however you choose to follow along with us, as always, may your story continue. And so for now, our story continues. Xanathar, the majestic blue dragon, breathes quietly in his lair. The smoke hangs low in the dark cave as this champion of wealth smiles in his sleep, as the money from Boshan flows into his clutches. This dragon profited well off of the bloodlust from Basile and the Sons of War, His participation in the coming battle would prove a landslide victory for Boshan. Although Lord Basile signed the papers to pay Zonathar, he did not consider the challenge of moving such a large sum over land. In fact, he spent more of his attention on raising the Bloodhunger Demon at the request of his mistress, Starblood. Together, they drew their gaze towards the Black Lotus and planned a summoning ritual. But Lord Basile should have protected his investment with Xanathar. For under the cover of shadow, the four bookends assembled at the side of the mountain, and one by one, quietly and patiently, they spread the wealth of Boshan alongside the mountain, burying it in the caves and savoring some of it for their own pockets. Much of the wealth of Boshan was lost during the last few weeks, and some of it redistributed in clandestine ways to unsuspecting recipients. Over the next two weeks, the bookends drained Xanathar and Boshan of their wealth and swore an oath to never reveal the location of the entire hoard. Once Xanathar discovered this atrocity, he raised himself from slumber and proceeded directly to Boshan with vicious ire and lightning. In one fell night, he raised the city to the ground. He searched out Lord Basile himself, even on the night of the summoning ritual, and swallowed him alive along with the Black Lotus. Starblood, the witch, fled into the shadows and was never seen again. The Blue Dragon warned the survivors of trespassing against his good faith in the future, and he judged the noble houses with a flaming breath. That night, Baldtop did not need scrying stones or crystal balls, for all could see the smoke rising across the land. Boshan was burning. One year after the final battle, Baltop Library reopened its doors to pilgrims once again. And as for the bookends, they blended with the shadows in order to conceal their actions and detach them from the white gloves of Baltop Library. And in the wilds they wait, for one day, Baltop may call, for knowledge, for discovery, for rescue or protection and only then will the bookends heed their oath. And so for now, our story concludes.
Thank you for listening. If you like this background music and ambiance, please visit Tabletop Audio at www.tabletopaudio.com. The book ends for the book ends for protectors of our Lord. In shadows they wait with vigilant eyes. Their fame lasts evermore.